The day began just like any other. We were walking on a path in East Tennessee, a place so quiet you could walk all day without bumping into anyone. We left the car park in the morning, the sun was out, and the path looked welcoming. We set up our camp on a rocky hill, about fifty yards from the path. The sun was going down, making long shadows and giving everything a warm, orange light. After a quick meal, we were likely asleep by 7 p.m. At about 11 p.m., I woke up to a strange noise. It was the sound of people talking softly, it sounded like German. I listened carefully, trying to understand the words, but they were too soft. The voices seemed to be getting nearer, along with the sound of footsteps. I woke my friend, who confirmed he was hearing the same thing. The footsteps stopped suddenly, seemingly just ten feet from our tent, but the voices kept on whispering. I opened the tent and looked out into the dark. There was nothing. I took my flashlight and shone it around, the light cutting through the dark. Still, there was nothing. After a few minutes, we decided to get back in the tent, hoping it was just our minds playing tricks on us. But then, the voices started again, this time along with what sounded like someone chopping a tree with an axe. My friend put on his boots, and we both agreed the sound was coming from just ten feet away to the right of the tent. He opened the tent slowly, we were still hearing the sounds, and he jumped outside with his flashlight, heading towards the noise. But there was nothing. We sat outside the tent for over an hour, the cold creeping into our bodies. But we heard nothing more. Eventually, tiredness took over, and we crawled back into the tent and fell asleep. Around 3.30 a.m., the axe sound started again. We both just lay there, listening. A few minutes later, we heard the cracking and whooshing sound of a falling tree, and felt the thud as it hit the ground. We both jumped up and rushed out of the tent. But there was nothing. No sound at all. No wind blowing through the trees. No bugs. No frogs. Just silence. We packed up everything in minutes, but decided not to leave because the climb back down to the path was hard in daylight and too dangerous in the dark. We sat there until the sun came up, without hearing the voices or acts again. As the first light of the sun broke the darkness, we started searching the area. We probably went 100 yards in every direction from our camp, but there was no sign anyone had been there and certainly no large recently fallen tree. The forest was as it had been the night before, untouched and peaceful. The rest of the day passed without any problems. We walked back down the path, the events of the previous night hanging over us like a dark cloud. We never did find out what caused those sounds, and maybe we never will. But one thing is for sure, we'll never forget that night in East Tennessee. The sun went down and it was night time. We were a bunch of friends, far from any town or city, right in the middle of the wild. We had spent the day hiking and looking around places no one had been to before. When it got dark, we sat around the fire. The fire was warm and made our faces glow. We started telling scary stories about lions, bears, and even Bigfoot. Each story was scarier than the one before and made us feel really scared. The sound of the fire and the quiet of the forest made everything seem even scarier. The sound of leaves moving and an owl hooting somewhere far away added to the scary feeling. We were scared enough and started thinking about all the animals that could be hiding in the dark. We decided it was time to sleep, so we went to our tents. We left one person awake to keep the fire going. The fire was the only thing giving us light and keeping us warm in the dark forest. We took turns, each of us staying by the fire for an hour before waking up the next person. Just as I was about to fall asleep in my tent, I heard a really scary scream. It was a mountain lion, and its scream echoed in the forest. My heart was beating really fast when I heard another scream, this one was closer. It was another mountain lion, answering the first one. The two big cats were talking to each other, their screams made me feel really scared. I could hear the sound of leaves moving and twigs breaking. The mountain lions were moving around, their screams getting louder and more often. I could feel my heart beating really fast. I was really alert. I knew I had to stay calm and not move suddenly so they wouldn't notice me. 
As the night went on, the screams slowly got quieter and then stopped. The mountain lions had gone away. They weren't a danger anymore. I felt relieved. The scary feeling in the air slowly went away. We had made it through a night in the wild, a night we would remember forever. When the sun came up, we got out of our tents. The fire was still burning, showing how tough we were. We had faced our fears, made it through a night in the wild, and lived to tell the story. It reminded us of how beautiful and powerful nature is, and where we fit in the big picture. So, we packed up our tents and put out the fire, and left the wild with a new respect for it. We had come face to face with the wild, and we had made it. It was a camping trip we would never forget, a story we would tell for a long time. I have a big piece of land in the middle of nowhere. It's full of trees and animals, a perfect place for people who love nature. One day, I decided to check out parts of my land that I hadn't seen before. It was a sunny day, and the forest was full of shadows. I could smell the pine trees and hear a stream somewhere far away. As I walked deeper into the forest, it became quiet and peaceful. Suddenly, I saw something move. A coyote came out from the bushes, looking scared and angry. It was a scary sight that made me feel cold all over. The coyote didn't run away, but growled and showed its teeth as it came closer to me. I was really scared. I've always been afraid of getting rabies, and seeing the coyote's mouth foam made me even more nervous. My heart was beating fast, and my hands were sweaty as I grabbed my gun. I took a deep breath, aimed, and shot. The loud noise of the gun filled the forest, then everything went quiet. I shot again and again, until I had fired seven times at the coyote. The coyote fell down and didn't move. I stood there for a while, my heart still beating fast, trying to understand what had just happened. I felt both relieved and scared. Relieved that the coyote was no longer a threat, and scared thinking about what could have happened. I walked back to my cabin, feeling less and less scared as time passed. Meeting the coyote reminded me that nature can be unpredictable and scary. It was a scary experience, but it also made me feel grateful for the safety of my home. That night, as I sat by the fire, I thought about what had happened. I realized that even though I was scared, I was able to face the danger. It showed me how strong people can be when they need to survive. From that day on, I always remembered the coyote when I explored my land. It reminded me of how beautiful but also dangerous nature can be. And even though I still explore my land, I'm more careful now. Nature is beautiful, but it can also be harsh. And that's a lesson I learned the hard way. I've always liked being outside and living in Nebraska. I was lucky to be near some of the best camping spots in America. One of my top picks was the Double Nickel Campground. It was open part of the year and had everything needed for RVs, with each spot easy to drive through for RVs of all sizes. One summer, I chose to go camping there by myself. The camping spot was big, with lots of trees giving plenty of shade and a nice breeze that moved the leaves around. The sound of birds and the occasional noise of small animals in the bushes were the only things breaking the quiet. One night, as I was in my tent, I heard a weird noise. It wasn't the usual sounds of nature I was used to. It was a low growl, followed by the sound of something big moving through the bushes. My heart was beating fast as I listened carefully. The growling kept going, getting louder and closer. I remembered reading about the animals in Nebraska. Could it be a bear? Or a big cat? I didn't have any weapons with me, just a small knife. I held my breath, hoping whatever it was would leave. Suddenly, the growling stopped, replaced by a loud sniffing sound right outside my tent. I could hear the animals sniffing around, probably trying to smell any food. I had made sure to keep my food safe, but the smell must have drawn it in. Just when I thought it couldn't get any scarier, I felt the tent move a bit. The animal was pushing against it, probably out of curiosity. I held my breath, praying it would lose interest. After what felt like forever, the sniffing sounds moved away, and I heard the animal leave. 
I breathe a sigh of relief, my heart still beating fast. I didn't sleep at all that night, and at the first light of dawn, I packed up my stuff and went home. That camping trip was one of the scariest things I've ever done, but it didn't stop me from loving the outdoors. It taught me to be more ready and respectful of the animals whose home I was visiting. And despite the fear, it was an adventure I'll always remember. Two weeks ago, me and my friend were having dinner in Denali National Park. We were sitting on the side of a mountain, looking out at the wild area around us. The air was fresh and smelled like pine trees, and we could hear animals in the distance. Out of nowhere, we heard a loud noise It was rocks falling down the hill above us. My heart started beating fast as I thought we were about to be hit by a landslide. I turned around to see what was happening, but it wasn't a landslide. Instead, about ten feet away, five caribou, including two babies, were running down the hill. They were kicking up rocks as they ran. It was an amazing sight, but there was more. Right behind them, about twenty feet from us, a wolf was chasing them. The wolf stopped when it saw us. It looked at us for a moment, then ran back up the hill. It stopped again on a small bit of rock about sixty feet away. It stood there, looking at us. It was getting dark, but we could see it clearly. It was a bit scary. We knew there was a wolf den nearby, but we didn't think we'd see a wolf so close. I wasn't really scared for my life there were two of us and only one wolf but I was definitely feeling a rush of excitement. The wolf took a few steps towards us, then decided to leave. It ran off into the wild. Just like that, it was over. We were left in silence. As I calmed down, I felt a sense of wonder. We had come face to face with a wolf, one of nature's top hunters, and we were okay. It made me realize how small we are in the big picture just two people in a huge, wild place. That night, as I lay in my tent, the sounds of the wild helped me fall asleep. I felt a deep respect for the world around me. It was a humbling experience, a reminder of the power of nature. And even though I wasn't shaking anymore, I kept thinking about the wolf's intense look. In the end, our camping trip was more than just a break from everyday life. It was a close encounter with the wild, a story to share, and a reminder of why we need to take care of these beautiful, wild places. It was an experience I'll never forget, that's for sure. I was camping at the Talk RV Village Campground and Cabins in Alaska, one of the best states in America. The campsite was huge, with over 100 spots for RVs, tents, cabins, and even fancy tents. Each spot was surrounded by neat trees and plants, making me feel like I was really in Alaska. The park was easy to navigate, and the bathrooms were super clean. There were two places to do laundry and a car wash on the property. One evening, as the sun started to go down, I decided to check out the nearby woods. The air was fresh, and the sound of leaves moving filled the quiet. I walked deeper into the woods, the campsite slowly getting further away. The tall trees made long shadows, and the path I knew so well seemed strange. All of a sudden, I heard a noise behind me. I turned around, but there was nothing. I thought it was probably a small animal and kept walking. But the noise kept happening, getting louder and closer. My heart was beating fast as I started to walk faster. Then I found a clearing. In the middle was a big, old tree, its branches sticking out like twisted hands. At the bottom of the tree, I saw new claw marks, deep and long. They were too big to be from any small animal. I felt a shiver down my back. I realized I wasn't alone. I could hear heavy breathing now, a low growl filling the quiet forest. I turned around and started running back towards the campsite. The growling got louder and I could hear the sound of paws hitting the ground behind me. Just when I thought I couldn't run anymore, I saw the lights of the campsite in the distance. I pushed myself, running as fast as I could. As I got closer to the campsite, the growling and the sounds of paws stopped. I got to the campsite, out of breath and shaking. I looked back one last time. The forest was quiet again. Whatever was chasing me had gone. 
I was safe. That night, I lay in my tent, thinking about what happened. The fear was gone, replaced by a feeling of wonder and respect for the wild. I realized that the woods were not just a place for us to explore, but a home for animals that we don't often see. The next morning, I packed up my stuff and left the campsite. As I drove away, I took one last look at the huge wilderness. It was a reminder of the exciting and scary adventure I had, a story I would always remember. I had always wanted to go camping in Wyoming, the best state of America for camping. I had heard so many stories about the beautiful scenery, the abundant wildlife, and the peaceful atmosphere. I decided to rent a cabin in Scott State Park, a 1,280-acre park that featured a stunning lake, a historic pueblo, and several hiking trails. It sounded like the perfect place to relax and enjoy nature. I arrived at the park on a sunny afternoon and checked in at the ranger station. The ranger gave me a map and a key to my cabin, which was located at the far end of the park, near the lake. He warned me that there was no cell phone service or Wi-Fi in that area, and that I should be careful of bears and other wild animals. He also told me that I was the only one staying in that cabin, and that the nearest neighbor was about a mile away. I thanked him and drove to my cabin. The cabin was small but cozy, with a wooden porch, a fireplace, and a kitchenette. It had one bedroom, a bathroom, and a living room with a sofa bed. I unpacked my bags and settled in. I decided to go for a walk around the lake before it got dark. I grabbed my camera and a bottle of water and headed out. The lake was breathtaking, with clear blue water reflecting the sky and the mountains. I saw some ducks and geese swimming on the surface, and some fish jumping out of the water. I walked along the shore, taking pictures and enjoying the fresh air. I felt so calm and happy like I had left all my worries behind. I was about to turn back to the cabin when I noticed a small wooden sign that said, Trail to Pueblo. I was curious about the historic site, so I decided to follow the trail. It was a narrow dirt path that led into the woods. I walked for about 15 minutes, until I reached a clearing. There, I saw the ruins of an ancient stone building, surrounded by a wooden fence. It looked like it had been abandoned for centuries. I approached the fence and read a plaque that explained the history of the Pueblo. It said that it was built by the Pueblo Indians around 1200 AD, and that it was a ceremonial center and a trading post. It also said that it was the site of a massacre in 1864, when a group of soldiers attacked the Pueblo and killed most of the inhabitants. The survivors fled and never returned. The plaque ended with a warning. This is a sacred and haunted place. Respect the spirits of the dead and do not enter. I felt a chill run down my spine as I read the last sentence. I looked at the Pueblo and wondered what horrors had happened there. I felt a sudden urge to leave, but I also felt a strange attraction to the place. I wanted to see what was inside. I ignored the warning and climbed over the fence. I walked towards the entrance of the Pueblo, which was a small hole in the wall. I had to crouch down to get in. As soon as I entered I regretted my decision. It was dark and cold inside, and I could smell something rotten. I turned on the flashlight on my camera and looked around. I saw piles of bones, skulls, and pottery shards. I saw blood stains on the walls and the floor. I saw a fire pit with charred remains. I realized that I was standing in a mass grave. I felt sick and terrified. I wanted to get out of there as fast as I could. I turned around and ran towards the exit. But as I did, I heard a loud thud behind me. I looked back and saw that the entrance had collapsed. A pile of rocks and dirt had blocked the hole. I was trapped. I screamed and pounded on the wall, hoping that someone would hear me. But no one came. I was alone in the dark, with the dead. I felt a cold hand touch my shoulder. I turned around and saw a faceless figure standing behind me. It was wearing a feather headdress and a leather tunic. It was one of the Pueblo Indians. It was a ghost. It grabbed me by the neck and lifted me off the ground. I struggled and kicked, but it was too strong. It opened its mouth and let out a blood-curdling scream. 
I felt its teeth sink into my flesh. I felt its breath on my face. I felt its hatred in my soul. I blacked out. I don't know how long I was unconscious. When I woke up, I was lying on the ground, outside the fence. I was covered in blood and dirt. I had bite marks all over my body. I was alive, but barely. I crawled to the trail and followed it back to the lake. I saw my cabin in the distance. I saw a light on the porch. I saw a figure standing there, waiting for me. It was the ranger. He saw me and ran towards me. He helped me up and carried me to his truck. He drove me to the nearest hospital. He saved my life. He told me that he had come to check on me and that he had found my camera on the trail. He had looked at the pictures and had seen the one I had taken of the Pueblo. He had recognized it and had known that I was in trouble. He had gone to the Pueblo and had found the collapsed entrance. He had dug me out and had brought me back. He asked me what had happened. I told him everything. He believed me. He said that he had heard stories about the Pueblo and that he had seen things there that he couldn't explain. He said that I was lucky to be alive and that I should never go back there. I agreed. I never wanted to see that place again. I never wanted to go camping again. I never wanted to leave my home again. I survived, but I was scarred for life. I still have nightmares about the Pueblo and the ghosts that attacked me. It was a normal summer day in August 2019. Me, my partner, and another couple decided to camp on our family's land in the Sequoia National Forest, on top of Slate Mountain. The day was calm, and we didn't see anyone else on the mountain. As the sun went down, it got dark, and we only had a small stove to give us some light and warmth. We were careful about starting a fire because there had been a big fire in the area a few years ago, and we were far from any phone service. As the night went on, we were just talking and having a good time. Around 10.30 p.m., our chat suddenly stopped. My two dogs, who were cozy under a sleeping bag at my feet, sat up like they were protecting me. They sniffed the air but didn't make any noise, not like the time a bear came into our camp at a different place. In the quiet that followed, we heard something that made us feel scared. It was the sound of what seemed like footsteps walking really fast straight up the steep side of the mountain. This was an area near our tent in the trees, a place we had looked at in the daytime and avoided because the ground was slippery with fallen leaves. The side of the mountain was really steep, not something you'd want to climb quickly. The footsteps didn't sound like an animal's. They sounded like they were from a two-legged creature. We felt uneasy. We decided to run a generator for a few minutes hoping the noise would keep whatever was out there away. I've always been a good camper, not easily scared. I've been camping in tents since I was a kid and the only things I've ever been scared of were a bear breaking into my car for a cooler or running into a mountain lion on a hike. But this experience, it felt different, it felt strange. As the generator made noise in the background, we sat in silence, listening, waiting. The rest of the night passed without anything happening. But the memory of those footsteps, the unease they brought, stayed with us. It was a reminder that even in places we think we know well, there are always things we don't know, things that can turn a normal camping trip into a night to remember. It was raining hard on my tent, like a constant drumming sound. I was inside, trying to put on my rain clothes. The air smelled like wet dirt and leaves, a smell that usually made me feel good but now it felt scary. While I was trying to put on my raincoat, a loud cracking sound came from the forest. It was so loud and sudden that I froze, my heart beating fast. Then I heard the sound of wood breaking, a sound so scary it made me feel really afraid. Before I could understand what was happening, a tree a big tree about 14 inches wide fell on my tent. I was trying to get out, the tent door half open, when it hit me. The force of the hit made me fall out of the tent and onto the wet, muddy ground. I lay there for a bit, shocked and confused. My body hurt from the hit, and I could feel the cold rain soaking my clothes. But I was alive. I was out of the tent, away from the tree. 
Slowly, I got up, feeling pain all over my body. I looked back at my tent, or what was left of it. The tree had smashed it completely, the bright fabric now a twisted mess of cloth and broken poles. I felt a shiver as I realized how close I had come to being smashed. If I had been a few seconds slower, if I had waited. But I couldn't think about what could have happened. I was wet, cold, and hurting, but I was alive. I had to find a safe place, to get out of the rain and take care of my injuries. With a serious look on my face, I picked up what supplies I could save and started walking. The forest was dark and scary, but I kept going, because I needed to stay alive. After what felt like a long time, I found a small cave. It was dry and protected from the wind, a nice break from the storm outside. I settled in, took care of my injuries and warmed myself by a small fire. As I sat there, listening to the rain outside, I couldn't help but feel relieved. It had been a scary experience, a close call with death. But I had made it. I was hurt, but not defeated. And as the fire burned and the rain kept falling, I knew that when morning came, I would be ready to face whatever came my way. Because I had faced the worst that nature could do, and I had made it. It was hunting season, and I was in a cabin in the middle of nowhere. The day was long and tough, with no luck in hunting and the cold getting to me. When night came, it got even colder, making the cabin feel like a fridge. I was about to sleep when I suddenly felt sick. It was like someone punched me in the stomach, leaving me out of breath and confused. I got out of my sleeping bag and went outside. It was really dark, and I couldn't see anything. I didn't have time to find a light because I needed to go to the bathroom right away. The first time I went to the woods was a rush, trying to get rid of the sickness. The second time was just as bad, with the cold and darkness making it worse. By the third time, I was weak and shaking from the cold. While I was in the woods, I heard something. It was a heavy footstep, like something big was walking around. I was scared and thought of Bigfoot. I knew it was silly, but I was too scared to think straight. I wanted to wake up the others to check out the noise. But I was too sick and weak to do anything. The noise kept getting louder, and I felt like something big was out there. Finally, I stopped feeling sick but I was really tired. I went back to the cabin, still hearing the noise. I was too tired to worry about what was out there. The next morning, I woke up to the sound of birds and sunlight coming into the cabin. What happened last night felt like a bad dream, and I felt better. I told the others about what happened, and they looked worried. We decided to leave early and packed up our stuff. As we were leaving, I looked back at the woods, remembering the noise from last night. I knew I would never forget that night, but I also knew that I made it through. And that's what mattered in the end. The sun had gone down, and the woods in Sweden were lit up by the soft light of the moon. I was in my tent, all alone in the middle of nowhere. It was so quiet, you could only hear the leaves moving or an owl hooting now and then. Out of nowhere, a sound. Not just any sound, but a heavy, steady thump that filled the quiet night. It was a sound you couldn't mistake, one that made me shiver. The sound of an elk. They were big and beautiful animals, but also very dangerous. One wrong step, one accidental scare, and their strong hooves could hurt you badly. The thumping got louder, closer. My heart was beating fast as I lay still in my sleeping bag. I could hear it now, right outside my tent. I could hear its deep breaths, could almost sense it was there. It was sniffing around, curious about this odd thing in its area. Minutes felt like hours. I didn't dare to move, didn't dare to breathe. The elk, for its part, seemed happy to check things out without causing trouble. It didn't touch the tent ropes, didn't make any sudden moves. It was just there. After a while, the sounds started to fade. The sniffing stopped, replaced by the familiar thump of the elk's walk. It was moving away, losing interest in the odd thing in its home. I let out a breath I didn't know I'd been holding, feeling a wave of relief. As the night went on, the rush slowly left my body, 
replaced by a deep tiredness. But sleep didn't come easily. Every sound of leaves, every hoot of an owl, made my heart beat fast again. But the elk didn't come back. By the time the sun came up, I was a mess of nerves. But I was alive. I had made it through a night in the Swedish woods, had come face to face with one of nature's biggest animals and lived to tell the story. It was a scary experience, but also a humbling one. It was a clear reminder of our place in the world, of the respect we owe to the animals we share it with. As I packed up my stuff and got ready for another day of walking, I couldn't help but look back at the spot where the elk had been. There was no sign of it now, no hint that it had ever been there. But I knew, and I would carry that memory, that experience, with me for the rest of my life. It was a clear night with the moon shining bright. Our campfire was almost out, and the sounds of the forest filled the air. I was coming back from the bathroom, a small toilet we had set up a bit away from our camp. As I got closer to our camp, I saw a small, black thing going through our food. It was a skunk. It was sniffing around, its nose moving as it smelled the air. When it saw me, it stopped, its small eyes shining in the moonlight. It started to move towards me, its tail lifted a bit. It looked like it was hoping for some food. I felt a rush of fear. I ran towards my tent, my heart beating fast. I jumped into the tent, the cold, wet ground of the tent against my skin. I turned around just in time to see the skunk running towards me, its small body moving quickly. In a panic, I tried to close the tent. My hands were shaking, and the zipper got stuck. I could hear the skunk getting closer, its small claws scratching on the ground. I was really scared, trying to get the zipper closed. It was like that part in Jurassic Park, where the girl is trying to close the metal door as the dinosaur runs towards her. Finally, the zipper moved. I managed to close the tent just as the skunk got to it. I could hear it scratching at the thin fabric of the tent, its small body pushing against the tent. The zipper had gotten stuck on the cover that goes over the opening, and in my rush, I had torn a big hole in it. I sat there for a while, my heart still beating fast, listening to the sounds of the skunk as it finally gave up and left. I was safe, but I was still scared. The rest of the night went by quickly, and as soon as it was morning, we packed up and left. The tent, with its torn cover, was thrown away as soon as we got home. I still remember that night. It was a strong reminder of how wild nature can be, and how even a small animal like a skunk can be so scary. It was a camping trip I'll never forget. I've always liked being outside. I love the smell of pine trees, the sound of the wind in the leaves, and the stars shining at night. But a camping trip to Amicalola Falls State Park and Lodge in Georgia changed all that. The park was big, with lots of trees, big waterfalls, and different kinds of animals. The campsite was in a quiet spot, with tall pine trees and a small stream nearby. The air smelled like pine and wet dirt. The first day was normal. I put up my tent, got some wood for the fire, and cooked a simple meal. When the sun went down, I sat by the fire, listening to the sounds of the night. The next day, I went for a walk in the park. I walked through the trees, following the paths. I was amazed by the big waterfalls and the beautiful views. When I got back to my campsite I noticed something weird. My fire, which I had put out before I left, was smoking. I thought maybe the wind had blown on the embers. That night, I woke up because I heard a noise outside my tent. I took my flashlight and opened the tent. The light didn't show anything strange. I thought it was probably just a small animal, and went back to sleep. In the morning, I found my food all over the place. It looked like an animal had been looking for food. I cleaned up, but I felt a bit worried. On the third night, I woke up because of a loud noise. It sounded like something heavy was being moved. I took my flashlight and went outside. The fire was burning, making long shadows around the campsite. My heart was beating fast as I looked around, but I didn't see anything. The next morning, 
I decided to leave early. I packed my stuff and started walking back to my car. When I looked back at the campsite, I saw something that scared me. There were big footprints in the dirt around my campsite, too big to be from an animal. I don't know what happened at that campsite, and I'm not sure I want to know. All I know is that I'm not going camping by myself again anytime soon. Being outside is nice, but it can also be wild, hard to predict, and sometimes a bit scary. I've always loved being outside. When I moved to Montana, I was excited to check out the best camping spot in the state, the Apgar Campground in Glacier National Park. The campground was big, with 194 spots that were usually full between June and August. It was located near Lake McDonald and connected to the west end of the 50-mile going to the Sun Road. One summer, I decided to go camping by myself. I packed my stuff, made sure I had everything, and headed for Apgar. The drive was beautiful, with tall mountains and the shiny Lake McDonald along the way. The campground was busy with other campers, but I found a quiet spot near the lake. The first day was normal. I put up my tent, cooked a simple meal on the fire, and enjoyed the peaceful beauty of the lake. When night came, I closed up my tent and got into my sleeping bag, the sounds of nature helping me fall asleep. I woke up in the middle of the night to a weird noise. It sounded like leaves rustling, but it was too regular, too steady. I opened my tent and looked out, my heart beating fast. The moon was high in the sky, making long shadows on the ground. I couldn't see anything strange. I decided to check it out. I took my flashlight and stepped out of my tent. The noise was louder now, a steady rustling that seemed to come from the woods near my campsite. I walked towards the sound my flashlight light moving over the trees and bushes. Suddenly, I saw it. A big grizzly bear was going through a nearby trash can. I froze, my heart beating fast. I knew I was in danger, but I also knew running would only make the bear chase me. I slowly backed away, keeping my eyes on the bear. It seemed more interested in the trash can than in me. I got back to my tent and closed it up, my hands shaking. I could still hear the bear outside but it didn't seem to be coming towards my tent. I stayed awake the rest of the night, listening to the sounds of the bear and hoping it would go away. When the first light of morning came, the noises stopped. I carefully opened my tent and looked out. The bear was gone. I packed up my stuff and left the campground, my heart still racing from the night scare. That camping trip was the scariest thing I've ever done, but it also taught me an important lesson about respecting nature and the need to store food properly in bear country. I still love camping, but now I always make sure to secure my food and trash, and I carry bear spray just in case. The memory of that night at Apgar Campground will always remind me of the wild, natural beauty of Montana and the respect it deserves. A few years back, I was all alone in a far-off part of Nevada. I had just climbed one of the highest mountains there, a tough job that left me tired but also excited. The path was empty, with just a few hikers seen in the five miles up the path. The last hour went by without seeing anyone else. The empty, cold area slowly changed to a more wooded area, with aspen and pine trees here and there. The sun was starting to go down, making long shadows that moved with the leaves. The air was fresh filled with the smell of pine and the soft sound of leaves moving. About a mile from my car, I saw two people about 50 yards ahead. A man, maybe in his mid-forties, tall and strong, and a boy, who seemed to be about eight or nine years old. The boy was holding something in his hand, but from that far, I couldn't see what it was. They were half hidden behind a tree, talking softly to each other. I didn't think much of it and kept walking my mind filled with thoughts of a hot dinner and a cozy bed. As I got nearer, about twenty yards away, the boy suddenly came out from behind the tree. In his hand was a handgun, which he pointed at me and pretended to shoot. My heart jumped. A scary thought crossed my mind. Well, if I die now, I guess that's it. But nothing happened. They just kept walking, 
passing me on the path as if nothing had happened. As they passed, I got a closer look at the thing in the boy's hand. It was indeed a real gun. I kept walking down to my car, my mind filled with what had just happened. I decided to camp near the start of the trail that night, half expecting to see the two again. But I never did. I've never told this story to anyone until now. It's a scary reminder of how life can be unpredictable and the possible dangers that can be found in the most unexpected places. It's a memory that still gives me the chills, a sharp contrast to the peaceful beauty of the Nevada wilderness. I was way out in the wilds of Oregon, far from the usual path near a place called Oak Ridge. It was super quiet, with only the sound of the wind in the trees and the crunch of leaves under my boots. My brown Patagonia jacket looked just like the fallen maple leaves, helping me blend in with the fall colors. Suddenly, a man jumped out from the bushes. He looked out of place in the wild, wearing a polo shirt, jeans, and brand new sneakers. In his hands he had a scoped AR-15, which was really scary in such a peaceful place. You need a new jacket, he said, his voice harsh and cold. I almost shot you. His words stuck in my mind, a scary reminder of the dangers that can pop up when you least expect them. He asked about bears, his question hanging in the air like a hidden warning. I nodded, my heart beating fast, and quickly started walking again. The walk back to my car felt like a race. Every sound of leaves, every breaking twig, made me more scared. The wild, once a peaceful place, now felt like a maze full of hidden dangers. When I finally got back to the parking lot, my heart dropped. The only other car was a rental from Enterprise with plates from another state. It hit me then the man in the woods had been driving that car. The thought of him maybe watching me from the shadows gave me the creeps. As I drove away, the sun started to go down, making long shadows across the land. What happened that day really shook me up but I was glad to be safe. The encounter was a strong reminder of how unpredictable nature can be and how important it is to be ready for anything. It was a hike I would never forget, a scary adventure that would always make me think twice about going into the wild alone. One day, I chose to go for a hike up Ben Letty, a hill in Scotland. The weather was hard to guess, as it often is around here. The day started off bright, but as I started climbing, a heavy fog came in, covering the hillside in a spooky mist. I couldn't see much, and the path ahead was hard to see. The air was wet and cold, and the creepy quiet was only broken by the sound of my boots on the rocky path. I could only see a few feet ahead, and the fog seemed to eat up the sounds of nature. As I kept going, the fog got thicker. Suddenly, out of the white fog, three shapes appeared. My heart was beating fast as I tried to see through the fog, trying to figure out who or what they were. As they got closer, I could see they were three nuns, dressed in full nun outfits. They moved quietly, their faces peaceful and calm. They didn't seem bothered by the fog or the loneliness of the hill. They were just out for a hike, like me, but seeing them in such a place, at such a time, was both surprising and scary. I watched as they walked by, their black and white outfits standing out against the gray fog. They vanished as quickly as they had appeared, swallowed up by the fog once more. I stood there for a moment, the quiet once again surrounding me. Brushing off the spooky meeting, I kept on with my hike. The fog eventually lifted, showing the beautiful Scottish scenery. The rest of the hike was normal, but the image of the three nuns in the fog stayed with me. As I came down the hill, the sun started to go down, making long shadows over the scenery. The meeting with the nuns, the fog, the loneliness it all felt like a weird dream. But it was real, as real as the cold air, the tough hill, and the setting sun. In the end, the hike was not just a physical trip, but also a trip into the unexpected. It was a reminder that even in the most usual of places, surprises are waiting. And sometimes, they come in the form of three nuns on a foggy hillside. It was getting dark at the Garden of the Gods in the Shawnee. 
The setting sun made long shadows that moved with our campfire's light. My girlfriend, my daughter, and I were sitting close to the fire, enjoying its warmth. The only sound was the fire popping and cracking. Out of nowhere, we heard a noise from the woods. My girlfriend saw two bright yellow eyes looking at us from the dark. She got scared and quickly ran into the car, leaving me by the fire. I was a bit confused but not really worried. I thought it was just a raccoon, maybe attracted by the smell of our food. I yelled, Hey raccoon, I see you. Go away, dude. But the eyes didn't move. They just kept looking at me. I felt a bit weird, so I moved my feet, hoping the noise would scare it off. But the animal didn't move. Instead, it went low to the ground, like it was trying to hide. That's when I noticed it was as big as a deer. But it couldn't be a deer. Deer are usually scared of people. I shone my flashlight on it, hoping to see what it was. But all I could see were those eyes and the shape of its head. It moved quietly. There was no sound of leaves or twigs breaking. It was really quiet. When I turned my flashlight towards the car to check on my girlfriend and daughter, the animal was gone. I looked around the woods, but it was gone. All that was left was the feeling that it had been there, and the mystery of what it was. The animal had a light brown coat and was as big as a deer, but it was unlike any animal I'd ever seen before. I thought about reporting it to the IDNR, but I figured they'd just think it was a made-up story from a camper from out of town. So, I didn't say anything about it. The rest of the night was quiet, but I couldn't forget those bright, staring eyes. It was a reminder that in the wild, we're never really alone. And sometimes, we come across mysteries that are meant to stay mysteries. When the sun came up, we packed up our camp and left the mystery of the Shawnee behind. But the memory of that night, of the unknown animal in the woods, will always be with us. It was a camping trip we'll never forget. It was nightfall, and the woods were full of nighttime sounds. My buddy, known for his pranks, was up to his usual tricks. He'd shake our tents, toss stones, and make all sorts of noises to freak us out. That night, he was really going for it, making a lot of noise outside my tent. I yelled at him to knock it off and go to bed, trying to ignore the sounds and bumps against my tent. Out of nowhere, I felt a big thing push against my tent. Thinking it was my buddy, I punched it as hard as I could. It was way bigger and heavier than I thought. It was like punching a brick wall. There was no reaction, no giggles, no payback. Just quiet. The woods went silent. I brushed it off, thinking my buddy had finally decided to hit the hay. I got back into my sleeping bag, feeling the rush slowly fade away. The sounds of the woods slowly came back, helping me drift into a fitful sleep. I dreamt of shadows and weird noises, but I wrote them off as leftovers from my buddy's pranks. When morning came, the sunlight peeked through the trees, casting long shadows on our campsite. As I got out of my tent, I noticed something strange. Our dishes were all over the place, and there were big, clear prints in the dirt. They were too big to be a person's. My heart was racing as I realized what they were bare prints. The truth hit me like a ton of bricks. The thing I had punched last night wasn't my buddy. It was a bear. I had punched a bear. The thought was both scary and crazy. I looked around the campsite, half expecting to see the bear still hanging around but it was gone. We spent the rest of the day in shock and disbelief. We packed up our campsite, jumping at every sound in the bushes. The drive home was quiet, all of us lost in our own thoughts. I couldn't help but replay the events of the previous night, the fear and the relief mixing into a weird mix of feelings. That camping trip will always stick with me. Not for the pretty views or the good times with friends, but for the night I punched a bear and lived to tell about it. It was a harsh reminder of how powerful and unpredictable nature can be, and the thin line between adventure and danger. From then on, every sound in the night, every shadow in the woods, reminded me of the bear. And every camping trip became a story of survival, a sign of the basic instinct that lies sleeping within us, ready to wake up when faced with the raw power of nature.
It was a really dark night, the only light was from the dying fire. The air smelled like pine trees and I could hear a river in the distance. I was camping deep in the woods, where nature was in charge and we were just guests. After dinner, my dogs started barking like crazy. I thought they saw a deer or something, so I took my flashlight to go get them. When I left the tent, it was really cold. I was shivering, so I zipped up my jacket. I followed the sound of the barking, my flashlight lighting up the dark. The closer I got, the louder the barking. Suddenly, my flashlight showed a big shape. It was a bear, a big mama bear. She was huge, her fur shiny in the light. Not far from her was a baby bear, looking around with big eyes. The dogs were barking at them, standing stiff and looking scared. I wasn't scared, weirdly. I was more worried about the dogs. They were small, no match for a bear, especially a mom protecting her baby. I knew I had to get them away from her. I called the dogs, trying to get their attention. But they were too focused on the bears. I had no choice. I had to step in. I've done it before, ran at a cow and even a big elk to save these silly dogs. I took a deep breath, gathered my bravery, and ran. The mama bear turned to look at me, her eyes shining in the light from my flashlight. But she didn't attack. She just watched as I grabbed the dogs, one by one, and pulled them away. Once I had them all, I slowly backed away, never looking away from the bear. She watched us leave, then turned and walked away with her baby. The dogs stopped barking, watching as the bears disappeared into the dark. I breathed a sigh of relief. We were safe. Back at the camp, I tied the dogs up, making sure they couldn't run off again. I sat by the fire, watching the flames, the dogs quiet at my feet. I knew then that if anything happened to me out here, it would be because of these silly dogs. But I also knew that I would do anything to keep them safe. That night, I fell asleep to the sound of the river, the smell of pine trees in my nose. Meeting the bear was scary, but it was also a reminder. A reminder that we were in nature's home, that we were the guests. And as the guests, we had to respect nature's rules. The next morning, I packed up our camp and we went home. The adventure was over, but I would always remember that night. It was a reminder of how powerful nature is, how beautiful the wild is, and how silly my dogs are. But most importantly, it was a reminder of the bond between us, a bond that was stronger than any fear, any danger. And that was the most beautiful thing of all. It was a cold winter night, and I was setting up camp. It was so cold, about 15 degrees Fahrenheit, that our water bottles froze in just an hour. The campsite was super quiet, and there was no one else around. At around 7 p.m., a pickup truck drove into our campsite. The truck turned off its lights and engine, but no one got out. It was dark and we couldn't see inside the truck. We felt a bit scared. We didn't know who was in the truck or what they wanted. So, we decided to leave the campsite to find a place where our cell phones worked. We wanted to call someone and give them the truck's license plate number. The truck just sat there in our campsite for two hours. Then, at 9 p.m., it started up and drove away. We went back to our campsite. The rest of the night was quiet. The only sounds were the fire crackling and an owl hooting in the distance. The truck was gone, but we would always remember this strange event whenever we went camping. I always enjoyed camping especially at the Double Nickel Campground in Nebraska. It was a big place that could fit all types of RVs. The wide open sky, the sound of leaves, and birds singing during the day were calming. But when night came, the sounds became a bit scary. One evening, after a day of walking around, I got back to my campsite. The sun was going down, making long shadows around my RV. I made a simple dinner over the fire the smell of the food mixing with the fresh air. As it got dark, I went into my RV, with only the soft light from the fire outside. In the middle of the night, I woke up to a weird noise. It sounded like something heavy being pulled across the gravel. My heart was beating fast as I tried to listen. 
The noise stopped, replaced by a creepy silence. I held my breath, waiting for the noise to come back, but it didn't. I decided to check it out. With just a flashlight, I stepped out of the RV. The light from the flashlight showed nothing strange. I walked around the RV, the sound of gravel under my feet breaking the quiet night. Nothing seemed wrong. Just as I was about to go back to the RV, I heard it again. The dragging sound, but closer this time. I moved my flashlight around, and my heart almost stopped. There, in the light, were new drag marks in the gravel, leading towards the woods at the edge of the campground. I followed the marks, my curiosity stronger than my fear. The marks led me to a big, fallen tree. As I got closer, I noticed something odd. The tree hadn't fallen naturally. It had been cut down, the stump left behind was clear proof. Suddenly it all made sense. The dragging sound was the tree being moved. But who would do that in the middle of the night? And why? I went back to my RV, my mind full of questions. I didn't sleep that night. As soon as it was morning, I told the campground staff what I had found. They were as confused as I was. The next day, some park rangers came. They figured out that the tree had been cut down by illegal loggers. They thanked me for my alertness, promising me that they would patrol the area more to stop such things in the future. That night, I slept well, knowing that I had helped protect the campground I loved so much. The experience was scary, but it taught me the importance of being alert and aware of my surroundings, even in a place as familiar as my favorite campground. And so, my camping trip ended not with a ghost story, but with a real-life adventure. It was a reminder that even in the peace of nature, unexpected things can happen. But with bravery and quick thinking, we can face any challenge that comes our way. It was a cool day when we, three girls, set up our camp in the middle of the woods. We were looking for a fun weekend away from the busy city life. We put up our tent under big pine trees that moved gently in the evening wind. When night came, the woods were full of the sounds of night animals. The sound of crickets and the far-off call of an owl were like a bedtime song as my friend and I got into our sleeping bags inside the tent. Our other friend, who liked the comfort of our car, chose to sleep there. In the middle of the night, I woke up to a strange noise. It was a soft sound, like someone stepping on dry leaves. I held my breath, trying to hear any other sounds. But all I could hear was my heart beating fast. Suddenly, our friend from the car ran into the tent, her face white and her eyes full of fear. She said quietly that she had seen a man standing over our tent, his shape lit up by the soft light of a cigarette. The thought of a stranger standing over us in the dark scared me. We sat in silence our hearts beating together. After what felt like a long time, we got brave and decided to face the stranger. With only our flashlights, we stepped out of the tent. The woods were very quiet. We looked around with our flashlights, but there was no sign of the man. The only thing that showed he had been there was a cigarette but still smoking on the ground near our tent. Feeling both relieved and scared, we decided to pack up and leave as soon as it was light. As we drove away, the woods seemed less friendly and more scary. The memory of the man and his lit cigarette would always be in our minds, a scary reminder of the night we were not alone in the woods. The experience taught us a good lesson about how nature can be unpredictable and how important safety is. It was a camping trip we would always remember, a story we would tell with a shiver and a look over our shoulders, wondering about the man in the woods and what could have happened if we hadn't woken up. I've always enjoyed camping, and Montana, with its wide open spaces and clear skies, was my go-to getaway. I chose to spend a weekend at the Apgar Campground in Glacier National Park, famous for its stunning views and variety of animals. The campground was huge, with almost 200 spots. Located on the park's west side, it was just a short walk from Lake McDonald. The lake's super clear water mirrored the tall mountains and the endless sky creating a reflection that was almost dreamlike. On the first day, I pitched my tent near the lake, 
the gentle sound of the water hitting the shore creating a calming background noise. The air was fresh, filled with the smell of pine trees and wet soil. When night came, the sky was filled with stars, so close it felt like I could just reach out and grab them. The second day was when weird stuff started happening. I woke up to find my food all over the place. I thought it might be a bear, but there were no footprints. Later, while I was out walking, I got this creepy feeling of being watched. I brushed it off, thinking it was just because I was alone and the wilderness was so big. That night, the peace of the campsite was broken by a scary howl. It was long, sad, and echoed through the quiet night. I got goosebumps. I told myself that Montana was home to wolves and tried to sleep, but I couldn't shake off the feeling of being worried. The next morning, I found my campsite all messed up. My tent was ripped, and my stuff was thrown around. There were no signs of any animal. It was as if a strong wind had caused chaos, but the trees around were untouched. I decided to end my trip early. As I packed up, I felt a sense of relief. As I drove off, I looked in the rearview mirror. The campground, lit up by the morning sun, looked peaceful as if nothing had happened. Back in the safety of my home, I couldn't stop thinking about the weird events. Was it just my mind playing tricks on me, or was there something out there in the wilderness? I guess I'll never find out. But one thing was sure the Apgar campground had given me a camping trip I would never forget. As the sun started to go down, we began our side trip to the store. The rest of our team chose to stay back at the camp, leaving just a few of us to go. We knew the path well, having walked it many times, but this time, it was unusually quiet. Walking along, the thick woods on both sides of the path seemed to close in on us. The only sounds were the leaves rustling and the occasional bird. A few miles in, we saw something that scared us. Right there, in the middle of the path, was a huge bear. Its fur was dark brown, its eyes black. It was just sitting there, like it owned the path. We quickly moved back, our hearts beating fast. But we had a problem. This was the only way to the store. We were stuck. We decided to make a lot of noise, hoping to scare the bear away. We stayed out of its sight, just around the bend in the path, and started shouting and clapping. After what felt like forever, we carefully looked around the corner. The bear was gone. We breathed a sigh of relief and continued on our way, walking a bit faster now. The bear had scared us, but we were set on reaching the store. When we finally got there, we felt a huge sense of relief. We had faced our fears and were okay. The rest of the walk back to the camp was normal, but we couldn't forget the bear on the path. It reminded us of how unpredictable nature can be and the respect it deserves. That night, as we sat around the campfire, the story of our run-in with the bear was the main topic. It was a story of fear, bravery, and survival. It was a story that would be told again and again, becoming part of our team's history. And even though it was scary, it also showed our strength and our ability to face challenges. It was a day we would always remember. A day when a normal hike turned into an adventure. A day when we came face to face with the wild and lived to tell about it. We decided to go camping at the Rocky Mountain National Park for a week. It was me, my boyfriend, his friend, and we were all from NW Ohio, a very flat place. We thought mountain camping in August would be easy. We only brought blankets and pillows, just like we do for summer camping back home. The first day was amazing. The hike was tough but exciting, and the views were incredible. When night came, we set up our camp, lit a fire and had a great time chatting and laughing under the stars. But when it got really dark, it also got really cold. It was so cold that we were shaking even with the fire and blankets. I remember thinking, I've never been this cold. We didn't expect the nights in the mountains to be this cold, especially in August. Every night was the same. We would make a fire, but then the rain would come and put it out. We were left in the cold, shaking. We learned the hard way that mountain weather can be unpredictable. Even with all these problems, 
we didn't give up. We hiked during the day, saw beautiful places in the park, and survived the cold nights by staying close for warmth. We were young, in our twenties, and we loved the adventure. Looking back, it was a good lesson for us. We learned to respect nature and its power. This lesson stayed with us when we moved to Colorado. We learned to prepare better for camping, getting the right gear and always checking the weather. Now we also go camping in the desert, which has its own challenges. But no matter where we go, we always remember that cold, rainy week in the Rocky Mountain National Park. It reminds us of how strong we are, how we can adjust, and the fun adventures that are waiting for us when we try new things. When I was in high school, I was full of energy and loved trying new things. The idea of going on a week-long hiking trip was super exciting. I had planned everything carefully, even down to the last snack bar. I thought I was really smart for bringing a hammock instead of a heavy tent. But I didn't know that this choice would turn my fun trip into a scary experience. The first few days were amazing. The hammock was comfy, and I felt really close to nature, gently swinging with the wind under the stars. But then, things started to go wrong. I started to feel a scratchy feeling in my throat that wouldn't go away. I thought it was just a small problem, maybe because of the dry air. By the fourth night, the scratchy feeling had turned into a bad case of post-nasal drip. I could feel the mucus building up, making it hard to swallow. I tried to sleep it off, hoping it would get better by morning. But the hammock, which I had thought was a great idea, was now causing me pain. The V-shape it made me sleep and seemed to make the condition worse. Every day became a battle. I couldn't eat without throwing up, the mucus making me feel sick. I was weak, thirsty, and far away from any doctor. The beautiful paths and views that I had loved now seemed scary and dangerous. I was alone, frightened, and ill. Even though things were tough, I knew I had to keep going. I forced myself to walk, to take one step after another. I lived on water and the few bits of food I could keep down. The nights were the hardest, the darkness making my fears worse and the cold making me shiver. On the seventh day, I finally got to the end of the trail. I was just a shadow of the excited hiker who had started the journey. But I had made it. I had survived. The experience was a tough lesson in being humble and respecting nature. It taught me how important it is to prepare properly, and the dangers of being too confident. It was a week of fear, but it was also a week of learning, growing, and in the end, surviving.